Hello and welcome back to a very quick update on DSM 7.0. One of the areas that I know a number of you um, kind of reached conflict with when you upgraded from DSM 6.2 to DSM 7.0 was the utility of Plex Media Server. Although everyone, myself included, was telling you do not do this on an as you use regularly. Make sure you do this in a virtual setting or back up everything so you can revert um, to one shape or form. A number of you went ahead and upgraded your systems and found that Plex Media Server was no longer supported. Well, I'm pleased to confirm that Plex Media Server is now on the beta. If we go into the package center here, we can scroll all the way down, all the way down here, and as you find, Plex Media Server is now available. It is version 1.2103744. I know, catchy name, right? Now, there are a few things to bear in mind, though. Just because it's there doesn't mean that it automatically is the same as before. There's been a few changes that I'm going to go through on this video with you. It's going to be a very quick video here because this is only something I noticed a little while ago while preparing for the Plex Media Server testing on the Synology DS1821+. Plus. Now, you go ahead and you download the package just like you have before. You'll go to that package center. It will be in the beta packages just like everything else is um, in DSM 7. But the installation of this third party app is slightly different and I would argue for the better. In, pre in previous devices, and if we bring up one of my other devices here on the network, if we bring that on there in the background, the 1821 Plus, uh, the one that we're testing here in the background for Plex Media Server testing, look at that CPU utilization down there. Originally, when you installed Plex Media Server, afterwards, you would have to go into the control panel settings, you'd go into user settings, you'd find the user that had been created for Plex, and then make sure that that user had the right permissions and access to the areas that your media lived in. Now, that is the way it used to be. Now, on DSM-7, as this app installs, it will become a lot more clear. What happens is, you have to pre-select those options early doors. It, the application will ask you to do those things first before proceeding, which again, I argue, is the better way around. But you know what, rather than you guys watching a loading bar, let's fast forward to the completion of the download, and I'll show you the next steps in the installation. Right, so the download is nearly completed there, and again, the speed it takes will differ largely on your own core system and your own internet connections, of course, as well. So we've got the installation of Plex Media Server, but from this point, this is when things get a little different. So from here, you may notice that the first option you see is to do with the log file, so you can change the directory of where the Plex logs, what's happening, what goes wrong, what goes right, is saved. Now, you don't have to change that. That will just save the default share path if you choose not to put anything in there but it's nice to have that flexibility then click next to go ahead and install the rest of the installation however bear in mind that there is another change to the installation coming very very soon again i would argue this is for the better for a number of uh, plex newbies as well as the system will now invite you to set up a lot of the access terms um, in advance rather than after the installation which makes a lot more sense now you can read through this if you prefer, but I can take you through it step by step anyway. Uh, you need to go into the control panel first, and from the control panel, select the option for shared folder. From the shared folder, you need to uh, effectively find which one of these folders has got your multimedia. In my case, the multimedia is in the DS220 plus share, but just find whichever folder your multimedia is in. From there, click edit at the top, and from there, you'll then be given the permissions for this shared folder. Then head to the permissions tab here. And at first, double check if the Plex application has already appeared, which may be the case for existing NAS users who are exporting from 6.2 to 7.0. Ensure that the read and write tick is ticked. But then up here, select the drop down and select system internal user. From there, find Plex Media Server. Now, there may be no ticks or there may be read-only ticks depending on your own existing Plex setup. Or if you're doing a fresh installation, no ticks at all. I always select read and write because I think a lot of the time Plex may create extra data in these directories that can be used by Plex later on, such as subs and more. Make sure that it has at the very least read-only access or read and write access from here. Then click save. 
and from there the shared folder will then be updated and it will allow Plex Media Server to access the media inside that directory. In previous versions of Plex, it wasn't included. You had to go in manually to do that afterwards with almost no um, indication of doing so. So it's nice they've added that in DSM-7. Now, if you have multiple directories, you can repeat those steps. But for now, I'm going to click OK and Plex is now installed. Now, you may hit a barrier with regards to claiming this NAS. If you've already had this NAS already added to your Plex Media Server account, then when you've upgraded to DSM-7 with a fresh install of a Plex Media Server, you may find that either the libraries are not originally accessed and selected, or that you need to reclaim the server. If you need to do that, just go into the Manage Server Settings, and you can find the option for reclaiming a server within the general settings here. There may even be updates available. But for your library, as usual, just head straight into the device and start selecting the multimedia that's going to be inside your NAS. If you click the Home button at the top and head back into the main directory, you can go ahead and then select the Manage Libraries tab. This will allow you to re-add some of those folders. And for those who are installing a brand new Plex Media Server directory, this should be second nature. But importing your existing library may take a bit of extra time. In my case, clicking Films and then Add Folders, Browse for Media Folder, and this is where those permission changes we made earlier are of particular use. As you see, the other directories are available and there is my Plex Media Server library. I can go ahead, click Add, and it will start adding those libraries just like it has previously. And all you need to do then is let Plex in the background start scraping that metadata as needed and it will begin creating your Plex Media Server library once again. But bear in mind that this is not going to be a smoother run when exporting over from your existing Plex Media Server setup. Remember, DSM-7 is a beta and needs to be treated just as such. So if you are looking to uh, move over, maybe don't use your main Plex Media Server NAS library for a DSM-7 beta installation, as it may cause friction and ultimately undermine the utility of your Plex Media Server during the DSM-7 beta trial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. Do let me know if you did and click like if you did and click subscribe to learn more. I've got loads more DSM-7 stuff to come along with Plex Media Server testing of the brand new DS18 21 Plus. And I look forward to showing you guys that later on. Otherwise, I will see you next time.